Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video we continue talking about spatial data structures and we're going to continue some of the code we started last time looking at brute force attempts to find neighbors. So we talked about how our goal is to be able to pick a point and a radius around it and find all of the neighbors that are within that radius. And that the brute force approach to this was to run through all the other uh, points and see which ones were within that distance. So we created this trait called neighbor finder because it is going to, well, because it's going to be helpful in all of the things that do this, I'm going to want to uh, define a distance function and the distance function will take two points both of type A, because A is the, the type that we're working on here, and it's supposed to return a double. Um, we'll come back and we'll fill this in in just a second, but the code I want to write right now is the brute force neighbor finder. So we'll create a new Scala class, the brute force neighbor finder. And our brute force neighbor finder works on A and extends a neighbor finder of A. And of course, this has an error right now because it doesn't implement this method. Uh, let's go ahead and say that this returns unit. Now this method is perfectly happy because uh, we've written the method, of course, it doesn't do what we want yet. So the idea here is that we're just supposed to run through all of the uh, points that are in here and find the, the neighbors. Um, well, we need some points first. And this should be a sequence, in fact, I need it to be an indexed sequence of type A. I really don't care if exactly what type of sequence it is, as long as I can get to the values quickly. Maybe we'll modify that in a bit when we try to write some, some test code for this. Uh, so we get a whole bunch of points, and I want to find out which ones are close enough to a particular point that's passed in, and for all of those that are, check to see, uh, call this visit method on them. So let's do for a or for p in points. This would be as simple as if the um, actually I should not call that method dist and the thing that I'm passing in here. Uh, how about we call this search dist? And just to be consistent, though you don't have to do this so that it matches across the different implementations. I'll do that. Uh, if dist of p comma p and t is less than or equal to search dist visit p. And that's a perfectly happy brute force method. It's order in. It runs through all the points. And of course, if we called this on all the points, we would wind up going through order in, uh, order in squared operations. Now, this calls this method dist here, which we haven't written yet, and that's a bit of a problem for us. So how do we calculate the distance? So one of the things is, in our drawing, we had all of our data is in 2D. Okay, so they have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. But in reality, I don't want to limit myself to that. I want to have the ability to have multiple dimensions, however many I want. Um, and so to calculate a distance on that, well, the Cartesian distance is equal to the sum of the squares of the distances, and I take the square root of that. So I would want math dot, oops, with an M, math dot square root of, I want to take the sums of the differences, so this would be P1 sub 0 minus P2 sub 0 quantity squared uh, times P1 sub 0, uh, oops, yeah, get rid 
with that. Minus P2 sub zero plus, and then I need the same thing. Oops, the plus should go here. I would need the same thing for P3, P4, or, well, you'll notice even this right here is an error of what if this were dot x land dot x dot x dot x well if I did dot x dot y dot z that's great for up to three dimensions but I start running into problems beyond that the other approach of doing this with indices scales much better to to an arbitrary number of dimensions but my type A has to be something that I can index and that's the problem right here is that it says you can't index this so what does this mean? Well, really what this is doing is it's calling the apply method. It's saying that this needs to be a function and the function is taking a single argument of type int and it returns, well, hopefully a double. And that's that's the, the type that we're going to work in here. So I wanna put some restrictions on my type A. I want my type A to be anything that is a subtype of int to double and in fact, it turns out, I don't actually care if it's a direct subtype. I care if it is anything that is implicitly convertible to a subtype there. Um, oh, and that's my, the fact that I made this trait is not going to be happy with that. Uh, actually, I'm going to extend, just change this to a class for that reason so that we don't have to deal with that problem right now. Okay, so now this doesn't like the fact that I'm doing that, so I have to do the same thing here. Uh, okay. Abstract class. Okay, all my errors went away, only because I have a zero here. Uh, but this needs to be added to the sum of the squares, or to the, to the square of the difference of the next term, and the next term, and the next term. And I don't necessarily know how many of those there are at this point. Uh, maybe it would be nice to, to pass that in. So, um, let's see, where do I want to pass this in? Yeah, I think I'm actually going to pass it in here. Well, let's eval dim is an int so that all neighbor finders will have a dimensionality to them. That is actually going to force us to pass it in here. and then we'll pass that through to the neighbor finder and we need to come up with something happier here. So I need to take the sum of the squares of the differences which mm, different ways for me to to do this. How about we do uh, Let's do a P1, comma P2, dot, uh, zipped, except I can't do zipped because they aren't specifically sequences, they are just functions on things. Okay, zero until dim, um, dot map to map of i sub p1 of i minus p2 of i and then I want to square those values and then I'm trying to think because I've so the problem is if I do this take the math.square root of that. Uh, 
that compiles, I, it's inefficient. And since we'd be doing this by adding a view, I can make this so that it is non-strict and these things kind of happen. Yeah, this is good enough for, for right now. Uh, by adding the view, I make it so it so that the map doesn't actually create a completely new uh, array or whatever um, we have. But mm, okay, we'll live with this. So I take the sum over all of the squares of the differences from zero up to the dimension, and I take the square root of that, and that gives me a distance. Okay, so. We've gone through, we've written something that is a reasonably functional brute force neighbor finder. We haven't tested it. It implements our neighbor finder. We added some code in here. We realized what bounds we need to put on the type here. Uh, and this is a nice flexible bounds on the type. And that's it for, for this video. We'll come back in the next video and we'll start talking about how we can make this more efficient. What we can do that is better than brute forcing through all of these. Something so that if our number of points was much, much larger than 100, uh, you know, say a million, 10 million, 100 million, so we'd actually be able to do it. Something where, where order n squared is not happy.